Welcome back, band family. Before we get started today, I wanted to share with you kind of a cool app that uh, I encourage you to get. It's totally free and it's available for Android devices as well as for Apple iOS devices. It's called Bandmate and it is a tuner. A tuner uh, is a device that tells you what note you're playing. And Bandmate looks like this. When you first start up the app, uh, there's two different controls you can adjust. The first is this little switch on the far right side. You can either ha have it select this, uh, it looks like a hashtag on the bottom. That's a musical symbol we call a sharp. Or you can select the top symbol up there, which looks like kind of half of a heart with a line through it. Uh, that's called a flat. And I would switch it so that the flat on top is selected. The other thing you can select on this app is which instrument you play. So select the instrument from your list and then it will tell you what pitch you are producing. You can even try it by singing or whistling a note. No, oh, I guess that was an E flat. So check out Bandmate, and again, it's totally free for Android and iOS Apple devices. I've put a link to this in the resources folder on Schoology if you can't find it in the uh, App Store for your device. Let's talk about our embouchure. If you recall from the instrument fitting video, embouchure is just a fancy word that refers to the mouth shape or face shape you make when you're playing an instrument. For single reed instruments like both clarinet and saxophone, we have a very similar embouchure for both. And it starts with the M face. So say M. The M face, if you recall, is that face you make when you say M. So the M face is where we start, but uh, we also need to firm up our chin without it changing shape. And this is where it really is helpful to have a mirror. So grab a mirror. I have a mirror that's a, a portable mirror. I think this is originally like a locker mirror or something like that. You can buy them right now at most uh, department stores or uh, discount stores. But these are great. You can have it nice and close. Or you can get next to a, a big wall mirror and just walk up to it. That works too. But grab a mirror for today's uh, uh, lesson. You're going to need it. Pause the video. Come on back once you have a mirror. I want to watch myself as I'm saying that M and make sure that I understand what it looks like. M, and then I'll try making that same M face without a sound. But next up, I'm gonna firm up my corners and my entire chin really without changing the basic shape of my face. I'll show you what I mean. I'll go from the M face and then I'll firm up the, the, the chin. You might have noticed there that my chin got firm but it didn't change shape. It stayed basically the same. So. Here's some things you can think about. One of them is the EU uh, syllable. Say EU, and you might find yourself creating the correct face shape. Let me try it. EU. That's what it is. So say EU, and you'll probably get the right shape. Try it with me. EU. So that EU phrase can help you find it. Here's some uh, troubleshooting, things to watch out for. The most important thing to watch out for is the bunched chin. We don't want our chin to bunch up. The bunched chin uh, looks like it's rounded and it also is usually has a dimpled surface. If you think of what a golf ball looks like, it's got those dimples on the outside. We don't want our chin to bunch up like a golf ball and be dimply like a golf ball. So I'm gonna make uh, the M face. I'm gonna incorrectly bunch up my chin, but then I'm gonna correctly fix it by firming up and forming the correct flat chin. I'll show you. So you'll notice there that I had the M face and then I went to the bunched chin and then I went to the correct flat chin. Watch one more time. You'll notice when we said EU that our mouth was still open a little bit. That's kind of what we're going for. So try it again, do the EU and make sure that your mouth is slightly open. EU. So let's do some weight training for our face. I want you to do the EU phrase Firming up that chin, keeping it nice and flat, and I want you to hold it there for 10 counts, okay? I'm gonna count while I have the EU face on, so it's gonna sound a little weird, but work with me. EU, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Ah, relax. It might take a little time to develop the strength to be able to hold that for a long time. Let's try it again. We're gonna go to 15 this time. Ready? EU, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Ah, oh, relax. So I've been playing for a while, so I'm able to do this easily for long periods of time. But since this is your first day, you may only make it to five or six. <laughs> if you can make it to 10, fantastic. 15, even better. We're gonna try it one more time. We're gonna go all the way to 20. And don't worry if you can't get all, get all the way there. If you need to take a break in the middle and come back in, that's just fine. EU, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. How'd you do? Did you make it all the way to 20? Did you at least get to five or six? Do this a little bit every day and you're actually increasing the strength and the endurance of those muscles in your chin. Are you ready to make some sound? Go ahead and grab your instrument case, but don't open it yet. As you look at it, you'll notice that there is a, a lid and then the bottom part of the case. So the, the lid is usually the thinner section and have that on top. The bottom section of the case, have that on the bottom. If you're not sure which side the lid is, again, it's the thinner side, and quite often there is a name on it, like the brand name of the instrument. So it might say uh, Yamaha or Selmer or whatever. So that's usually the lid. Go ahead and unlatch the latches lift up the lid, and if you did it correctly, your instrument didn't fall out because you had it upside down. <laughs> Go ahead and take out just a couple parts for today. Let's start by grabbing a reed. Now this reed is individually packaged, it came out of a box, and I'm gonna open it now to show you what it looks like on the inside. So I'll tear it open, and there is the reed. It comes in a plastic case, and this particular case has a little scooped out section for my thumb. So I'm gonna place my thumb right there and I'm gonna pull out that reed, being very careful not to touch the end of the reed. That end of the reed is super delicate. It is so thin I can actually see light through it. So I wanna make sure that I'm not touching the end, but it does need to be wet to vibrate. So go ahead and lick both sides of the reed and then place it on your tongue, in your mouth, almost like it's uh, like a lollipop. Just don't move it around. Now go ahead and leave that reed in your mouth for this next little section here and let it slowly uh, moisten. It'll probably taste like, mmm, bamboo. <laughs> yeah, we don't uh, uh, moisten the reeds because they taste good. It's because it makes it work better. One other bit of advice too, if it's a brand new reed, you might actually want to lick the entire back side of the reed. That's the side that probably has some printing on it. The other way you can do this is you can uh, dunk the reed in a glass of water and leave it there for about a minute or two. So that's a way to get around the mouth thing. It's, uh, but you need to have water in a glass. So most people just put it in their mouth. But like I said, be very careful. Don't move it around in your mouth and don't talk or else you might chip the end of that reed. Inside the case, I want you to find the mouthpiece and the neck. Now all the parts of the saxophone are very delicate, so be very careful as you pick these parts out of the case. The mouthpiece might be inside of a whole bunch of other stuff. For example, it may have this metal band around it called a ligature. And inside, uh, those might be inside of another part called a mouthpiece cap. So take the mouthpiece cap off, pull this part out, take the ligature out, and you'll have just the mouthpiece. Hold the mouthpiece in your left hand, hold the neck, in your right. Now you'll notice there's this key on the top there. It's very delicate, very fragile. If you press on it sideways, it's gonna get bent out of shape. And this little part up here that forms an airtight seal won't be airtight anymore. So I like to hold the neck by the sides like this. And uh, wherever possible, I'm not trying to touch this, this key at all. I'm holding it by the body of that neck. So I will insert this part of the neck into the mouthpiece just like this with a twisting motion. Now, as you do this, you might find that it's very difficult to place this in. So what you need to do then is to grease that cork. Especially if your saxophone is brand new, you might find that those corks are very difficult to get inside the mouthpiece because the corks are brand new, they're very big, they're very, uh, they're very dry. So we'll grease them up with cork grease. The cork grease often comes in a tube like this uh, that looks like chapstick. It's not chapstick. Or it might come in a little uh, container where you scoop it out with your finger. In either case, 
uh, you'll simply apply some of that uh, cork grease to the cork and uh, apply plenty there. I play just a little bit, but yours at home, you can apply even more. And once you do that, it should be easier to insert into the mouthpiece. So hold it just like this, press it in. Now, how far up you go, we're not really sure yet for your mouth and your saxophone, but a general rule of thumb is to go on about maybe halfway up the cork, maybe two thirds, probably two thirds would be even better for most people. So I would go on about two thirds of the way up, just like that. As you do this, you should have the hole in the mouthpiece facing down. So where the hole is in the neck, the hole in the mouthpiece should be facing the same direction. It'll actually, we'll learn later on that it'll be at a slight angle, but for now, <laughs> the hole and the hole should both be facing the same direction. Next, we need to apply the reed and the ligature to the mouthpiece. You still do have that reed in your mouth, right? The whole time, <laughs> okay. Um, when I put the reed against the mouthpiece, I need to make sure it's going the correct direction. If you look at the, uh, the reed, there is a rounded side. See, it's kind of shiny and rounded on this side. And there's also a flat side. The flat side probably also has some printing on it too. The same thing is true of the mouthpiece. Most of it's rounded, but there is a flat side right there. So I'm gonna hold this flat against flat. And I'll put the two together, flat against flat. Now, I'm not going inside the hole. It lays flat against the hole. It doesn't actually go like inside the hole. So flat against flat, boom. And it should uh, be centered left to right, and the end of the reed should be even with the top, just like that. As you place it in, uh, on there, uh, you could hold it right there with your thumb. So that's where we want it to go eventually. And I could actually play and make a sound with this, but the problem with that is that if I hold it in place with my hand, I can't operate the rest of the saxophone. That's where the ligature comes in handy. The ligature is basically uh, a way to tie this on. Ligature actually means to tie. So we're gonna tie this in place with the ligature. For now, take the reed, pop it back into your mouth, and grab the ligature with your right hand. I now have the ligature in my right hand, and you'll notice that just like the mouthpiece, it's shaped like a cone. So see how the mouthpiece is bigger and then it gets narrower? The same thing is true of the uh, ligature. It's bigger and then narrower. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the ligature over on top of the mouthpiece. As I do this, it'll slip on pretty, pretty easily. If it goes on like that and it doesn't seem to go any farther, well, that's because you have the cones facing in an opposite direction, right? So if the cone of the mouthpiece is this way, the cone of the ligature needs to be oriented the same way. As you put it on, you'll see there's these little screws those screws are operated with the right hand, so they need to be facing the right. If you find that your screws are going the other way, that means you need to spin it around until the screws are on the right hand side. It's a little bit tricky because there's different types of ligatures. There's different materials. Some of them are metal, some of them are fabric, um, and there's also uh, different ways the screws can go. Most of them, the screws are on the bottom where the hole is, and you operate them with the right hand. We call this a standard ligature. If the ligature, on the other hand, has the screws operated with the right hand where the screws are uh, on top, that's what we call an inverted ligature. Inverted means upside down. So if you have an inverted ligature uh, where the screws are back here and you still operated them with the right hand, that's what it would look like. This is not an inverted ligature though. This is a regular ligature. And I operate those, uh, those screws with my right hand and the screws are gonna be right there. So as you have this there, Try pushing up with your thumb, bring it back, up, down. It's like we're doing weightlifting right here. <laughs> so as it goes up and down, you'll notice it gets looser and then tighter because it's shaped like a cone, right? So remember that. Take the ligature back off, set it aside. Now grab the reed and we're gonna hold it in place against the mouthpiece with our thumb. Flat against flat, held in place with my thumb. And now I'm gonna take the, uh, the ligature and I'm gonna slip it over on top, but be careful. Remember that tip of the reed is super delicate. So as I slip this ligature carefully over the top, I wanna to make sure I don't break the end of that reed. Once it's on there, um, it needs to go where my thumb is right now. So I'm gonna take my right hand, thumb and first finger, and I'm gonna pinch the top of that reed just like this. Then I'm gonna grab my uh, ligature with my left thumb and I'm gonna pull it down nice and tight. As I do this, I wanna make sure that the reed is oriented left to right, back and forth. If I find it's not quite right, I can pinch this again, 
push up with my left hand and then using my two thumbs on either part of the reed, adjust it until it's centered left to right and even at the end. Hey, why do you think if it's up too far like this, why should I not push down the end of the reed? It's gonna break the reed, of course. If it ends up too far up like that, I'll grab the reed and slide it down with my thumbs until it's even. Once it's there, I pull the ligature down with my thumb and now I'm ready to play. The ligature might slide around though, so I'm gonna tighten those screws just enough where the ligature isn't gonna slide around. The ligature should be on the bottom half of the reed. The way I, think, I sometimes think about it is if the reed was a human, a person, the ligature would be like their pants. The pants should be on the bottom half of the reed, right? If the ligature was up too high, that would be like, you know, hiking your pants up to your armpits. You'd look pretty weird. So don't do that. Keep that ligature on the bottom half of the reed. Some reeds have a line in the middle. This reed, for example, has a line right in the middle on the rounded side. So that means that uh, that, if that was a human, that would be like the waist of the human. And if these are the pants, the top of the pants would be the waistband, right? So the top of the ligature should be basically even with the, that middle point of the reed. You can look at the back side of the mouthpiece too. Uh, if you find that the ligature is way over here or way over there, it's probably in the wrong spot. It should look just like this. At the very end of our practice session, you'll remove everything in the exact opposite order. You'll loosen up the ligature screws just enough to get it loose, pinch the top, push up with your left thumb, ligature comes off, you take the reed off. It'll be a little bit wet at that point, so you can dry it on your pant leg. <laughs> That's the official way we do that in the saxophone world. And then you'll take the uh, right hand on the neck, left hand on the mouthpiece, and gently pull them apart, making sure you don't put any pressure on that uh, key in the top there. So now we have the, the neck, the mouthpiece, the ligature, and the reed all assembled. This is the most important part of the saxophone. This is the business end of the saxophone where we make all the magic happen. We're going to form that same uh, EU face with our uh, with forming that embouchure and we're going to slide the saxophone mouthpiece in as we're doing that watch EU once I do that I have the saxophone uh, in the right position and at that point I'll simply blow air EU as I'm doing this I won't get any sound at all until I apply a little bit of extra pressure with my lips and I'm going to do that in the middle of blowing. So I'll start with air, I'll apply some pressure and that will turn into a sound. Watch. As the mouthpiece enters your mouth, you'll feel the pressure against your top teeth. Uh, the top teeth will actually touch the top of the mouthpiece and you'll feel that pressure there. Against the bottom though, you won't feel the reed against the teeth in the bottom because the bottom lip is in the way. So you're gonna have the bottom teeth cushioned by just a little bit of bottom lip and that's gonna to touch the bottom of, of the reed. So on the top we have teeth, on the bottom we have teeth and then lip and then the reed. One thing you can try with the Bandmate app is set it to alto saxophone. Make sure the switch on the side is set for the top selection there. That's the flat symbol. Looks kind of like a half of a heart with a line through it. Uh, for now, don't put it down on the sharp symbol at the bottom. We'll keep it on top. And then as you play that note, the note that should come up will be F. All right, let's do some troubleshooting in case you either weren't able to get a, a sound at all or if the note just wasn't that F. Um, make sure that your top teeth are on the plastic. Make sure your bottom teeth are covered by a little bit of lip and then pressing up in the bottom. Um, you need to make sure though that those are both acting on the mouthpiece here. If your top teeth aren't pressing down at all, it's not gonna work. If your bottom teeth are pulled back away from your bottom lip, it's not gonna work. We also need to make sure we have enough mouthpiece in the mouth. Uh, if you have too little mouthpiece in the mouth, as you blow, it'll be really hard to blow. So for example, if I'm just at the very tip, 
it's not going to work. It'll basically close off the end of that mouthpiece and reed, and you won't be able to get any air through. If you can't get any air through, push farther in. If you have too much mouthpiece in the mouth, you'll get some kind of crazy squawking sound. So that's too much mouthpiece. A great way to find that exact right spot is to explore both directions. Find uh, where you're starting from and then keep pulling it out as you blow until you find where it's really hard to blow. Then you've gone too far. Go back to your, where you started from and then keep trying again and again and again until it starts to get kind of loud and crazy and then it starts to squawk. Okay, so in between the squawking where it's too far in and the impossible blow when it's too far out, in the middle there is where you want to have that mouthpiece. So you have some things to work on. You need to spend some time in front of the mirror developing the strength of your flat chin, firming it up like that with the EU. You also need to work on correctly assembling the instrument. It is a complicated part to put together, really easy to damage the reed or the rest of the instrument if you do it incorrectly. So watch this video every day and work on assembling this correctly. But most importantly of all, you need to work on producing a sound with the neck and it has to be a consistent sound every single time. Now the temptation for you is gonna to be to go into that case and start jamming all parts together and trying to figure something out on your own. Don't do that. Remember the Texas method. The Texas method has you focusing on one thing at a time until you master it. And right now, this is what we're gonna master. And this really is the most important part of the saxophone. If you can play this well, the rest of it is gonna be easy. Imagine for a sec here, if I was a hockey coach that had a team full of players who were brand new to hockey, had never played before, had never even been out on the ice before. For that very first practice, should I put them all into full gear, give them sticks, send them out on the ice and have them play hockey? Or should I teach them how to skate first? Yeah, I should teach them how to skate first, right? So that's the same thing as this. I wanna make sure that you can skate first before we add everything else on. In that example of the hockey team, if those players left that first practice and they're starting to get a feel for how to skate, if they then go home, put all their equipment on and go out and try to play hockey, they're probably not going to be thinking about proper technique and form with the skating because they're going to be so focused on the sticks and the pucks. So they're going to learn a lot of bad habits and develop a lot of deeply ingrained uh, bad technique because they're not doing the one thing they should be working on. And when they get to the next hockey practice, their coach will probably be pretty disappointed that they have backslid so much, so much on their uh, skating form. So focus on what you need to work on, and we'll get to the rest of it very soon. Until next time, go practice.